Welcome to CEO Money. I'm Michael Yorba. Thanks for joining with me. I have Nick Cherikuri, President Third Eye Gen. ThirdEyeGen.com is the website. Nick, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. I'm glad you're here. All right. Now, how did you get started into AR from college? So AR was always a field of interest that we were interested in. We start actually started a club in college called the Penn Augmented Reality and Virtual Reality Club. It was one of the first clubs in the country that was focused on AR smart glasses. So we brought in a lot of people of interest from different companies who have been doing AR to talk to different people in the community. We brought in technologies and started experimenting with them and creating apps. So we definitely had a lot of interest in AR and this is seen as a futuristic technology. So people immediately gravitated towards this technology. And since then we formed a larger group and saw this as a great opportunity to bring this technology to a lot more people as this is something that's useful for a wide uh, swath of uh, the people out there. How are AR smart glasses currently used? So AR smart glasses are currently used primarily for enterprise use. So for example, right now we have our X1 augmented reality smart glasses that we released at CES of this year and we've been shipping it since then. They're primarily for enterprise use because right now the form factor isn't small enough for consumer use, but we are working very hard to make this form factor as small as possible. In enterprise, I would say the biggest use case is remote help. So we have a remote help app for the smart glasses where a field worker could wear the smart glasses and stream their live field of view to a remote expert sitting in front of their laptop a thousand miles away. So the beauty of smart glasses are that you are hands free. So you can continue working with your hands, but get any relevant digital information overlaid on top of your point of view. And that's what really makes smart glasses a significant step ahead of computers, phones, laptops, and uh, the technology that's already out there. And that's why a lot of the market studies show that this is a technology that's going to be taking off. Oh, I can see that. What about the biggest challenges for smart glasses? So right now, the biggest challenge for smart glasses is a combination of the form factor as well as educating uh, companies and businesses, people about what AR is. So most people have seen Iron Man, they have a general idea of what AR is in a cool kind of sense. But in terms of something they can use every day for relevant tasks, that's why we make really easy to understand instructional videos that people can understand, hey, it's as easy as putting it on and I could use it for remote help or 3D scanning or image recognition or any types of normal applications that are really useful for, for us. So the form factor is something we're working on to reduce in size to make it something almost like a pair of glasses. And our next version are X2 smart glasses, which we're releasing at CES coming up in a couple of months, will be the smallest smart glasses on market. So we're trying to make it look like a pair of glasses almost. They're smaller than the ones you're holding now? Yes, they're smaller than the ones I'm holding up right now. They're about half the size of this. Okay. Uh, um, I, I want to jump in there for a couple of real quick questions. It seems to sure. me that, that this would be a very good application for first responders. Let's say somebody's got to do triage immediately from a remote location, uh, amongst other things, uh, other applications that people can come up with. How is that working now? Sure, that's a great question. And funny enough, we just actually came back from an event a few weeks back in Perry, Georgia. It was the Verizon 5G first responder event where we were showcasing how smart glasses could be used by firefighters, police officers, uh, first responders in emer emergency scenarios where there's a large natural disaster or something. So some of the use cases that we found highly relevant at that conference were, for example, streaming a live drone feed onto the glasses so drones flying up a um, hundred feet above a location, someone, someone wearing the glasses could be viewing the live drone feed on the glasses and be hands-free so they don't need to be holding a tablet. Another use case is similarly remote help where a new field technician is going out to a location and they can get live remote help assistance via the smart glasses. A great use case for AR are live 3D annotations where if say you're new to a job, you don't know how to maybe fix a piece of machinery or equipment out in the field, you wear the glasses 
And on top of the real world location, you can view AR annotations. For example, step one, turn the screw here. Step two, turn the knob here. It can instruct you live, um, any digital instructions. So that's another thing people find useful. All right, talk to me about the future. So the future of AR is amazing in terms of what people see the potential of this technology to be. It's definitely considered the next major computational platform. We went from a desktop computer to a laptop to a phone, and now everyone's moving to smart glasses. The goal of these is to become as small as possible. The smaller they become, the more likely the normal consumers will wear them. And that's what Third Eye's really focused on, and we're on the cutting edge of that. So we're continuing to make this technology as small as possible, as well as develop the ecosystem of applications out there. The more apps on these, similar to a phone, the more likely people will use them. So we already have hundreds of software developers making all types of content from B2B apps to games to entertainment apps. And we're continuing to develop the application ecosystem of our third eye smart glasses. So we're pretty excited about where the future is going and the type of partnerships we're making right now. That really leads me uh, to this. Right now, everybody's using these. Do you see yep. that smart glasses can replace the, the, the bulkiness of this and be able to, to work from your glasses instead of your, your phone? I mean, instead of having to carry this thing around? Yeah, that's a good question. And that's what the potential could be if it's done correctly. So we're focused a lot on how do we make that transition from a phone to the glasses. So. For example, we're working on incorporating a cellular chipset on here so you can use it to make calls and use it at any location you want. So it's not just Wi-Fi, but it'll be similar to a phone. To reduce the size of this, we're working very closely with 5G. So in the upcoming years, 5G is going to be becoming really big. And what that will enable us to do is really offload a lot of the processing from the glasses onto the cloud and to the edge network. So that will really help reduce the size of this and make it into something almost like a pair of glasses or smaller. And that's definitely with combination of incorporating a cell network and offloading a lot of the battery and processing power from the smart glasses to the edge network. That will really solve um, the weight issue. That, yes, I, 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 you're definitely on the leading the pack on the on the uh, right track here. What is the coolest use? case for AR that you've seen so far? So the, there, I mean, there's so many apps, it's, it's hard to pick, um, but a couple of really cool use cases that we call OmniEye, which enables you to wear the glasses and just by rotating your head, you can view different high definition screens. So for example, say you're at the beach, you wear the smart glasses, you could be watching maybe 16 football games simultaneously just by rotating your head motion in high definition with total privacy just to you. So that's one cool app where you can, it really changes the way people can watch content. And that's something we're working with some uh, major entertainment uh, organizations to incorporate. Then the other apps like live image recognition, so you could recognize anything or anyone you look at. This is relevant for hospitals or anyone who needs to recognize something. And there's some other apps that are under the wrapper right now, but we are pretty excited when we announce them. So it'll be really cool, the potential for this. And the beauty of AR is that it's applicable across so many different industries. It's not just healthcare, manufacturing, or fuel services, gaming, entertainment. There's so many awesome spaces for this. So we're pretty excited. Yeah, it seems to me that the next stage on this, and I, I could be way off base because you're the expert here, would be uh, integration of QR codes for. Um, recognition and shopping. Definitely, and that's actually one use case we're discussing with in terms of for warehouses, for example, the ability to wear smart glasses and recognize QR codes and inventory management and things like that can really help save the time and uh, make improve the efficiency of a lot of these organizations. So that is something we are working on. But I totally agree with you. I, I just happen to know the guy that invented that. Um, I want to um, thank you for being a guest on the show. Um, I'm, I, I wish you, and I know that you're on something, definitely would love a sample. I'm just kidding. Definitely, yeah. We're making some more samples. We'll send one over to you. It's cool, cool device. All right, Nick, thanks for showing up today. I really appreciate the time. I know you're way on something with this. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to be here on our show.
Thank you. Thanks a lot for your time, Michael. You're welcome. You've been watching CEO Money with Michael Yorba. Thanks for joining with us. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.